to spend about 10 minutes of YouTube time going over the region's concepts that relate to World War II. Now remember, this is not a world history course, so we don't need to go into um, Hitler and um, unfortunately I don't get to teach the Holocaust and um, some of the internal European um, reasons for World War II. Um, we're really not going to explore. We're going to kind of stick to the basics and to the regions and see if we can't get those questions right. So um, really we're looking at, you know, kind of two essential questions. Really, um, what's America's, uh, you know, kind of foreign policy switch? How do we get involved in World War II? Um, which means you have to know what we're doing before World War II. Um, and then really the next big one is the effect of World War II. Um, we're also going to look a little bit at domestic issues and how war affects the home front. Um, and you'll be reminded of World War I because it's going to be very similar. But again, for anybody that's listening to this for the first time, these are regents-based concept lectures. So um, we're not worrying too much about dates and specifics and things like that. Um, that'll be saved for class time. So we can build your DBQ skills, your outside information, your thematic essays, um, yada, yada, yada. Right now, we're really working on multiple choice. Um, as I've said before, um, I don't like teaching to the test, but if that's part of my job description, darn if I'm not going to do a good job at it. So really, we're looking at 50 multiple choice questions, and at a minimum, I'd like to be seeing like the number 34, 35, at a minimum. If we all do that, we're going to continue all passing this exam. So let's, let's hit it. Um, we have to take a step backwards if we're going to explore America's reasons for getting involved into World War II. It's really important that we understand kind of basic traditional American foreign policy. And in class, a lot of times, I'm not going to do it here because to be honest with you, I'm wearing my pajama pants. But I would run across the room and if there was a radiator, Mr. Hughes would jump up there and you would all say, I would say, who am I? And you would all say, George Washington, you are G, the original gangster the first president of the United States. And through our hand signals, we remember that one of the ideas is kind of pointing at that door across the hall and saying, uh-uh, and then drawing a circle around me. This is the isolationism con um, concept. And we see that um, that unwritten rule, that kind of self-interest generated policy, which is going to keep America safe when we're the 98-pound weakling, is a, is, is a fallback. Um, after World War I, now we're getting into good content, in the Treaty of Versailles, and remember the Kumbaya song that Woodrow Wilson would sing representing peace, when he brings that blood-dripping treaty back to the Senate, checks and balances, remember the Senate can't you know, sign a, a treaty with the devil, he's got to go back to the Senate. What's the Senate say? No! And they reject the Treaty of Versailles. And in class, we play the turtle game. So in World War I, America's in the turtle, we pop our head out, and then what do we do? back into the turtle position. Um, and in the 1920s and in the 1930s on the test, you're going to look for that concept. There are some avenues that are a little bit different. Um, the Kellogg-Grand Treaty, the Washington Naval Conference, where we are going to kind of be part of the world community for those treaties to reduce arms and tensions and try to be the peacemaker. But we rejected the League of Nations, right? We, we crawl back to America thinking, never again are we going to send our boys to die for the European war, uh, you know, gods of war. Because we saw what happened after World War I, which is revenge and, you know, more animosity and um, all of that is exactly, you know, what we thought would happen, which is it gave rise to Hitler and another world war. So I don't know why we fought World War I to lead us into World War II. But here we are in the 1930s seeing the rise of fascism in Italy and Germany. And I, I got a feeling that the leader of the country, FDR, he knew this was a bad scene. But he can't go to Americans and go, let's go get involved, because, you know, it's not directly in our interest. We haven't been attacked. Uh, we have World War I on our brain um, still. Um, and, and America's not in a position to do that. If I say attack Afghanistan on September 10th of 2001, people look at me like I'm nuts. And I could talk about women's rights and, and, and Islamic fundamentalism and the harboring of Osama bin Laden. And we knew all that. We probably should have gone. But we didn't have the resolve. We didn't have the will. It took 9-11 to do that. So we need a 9-11 in order to get involved. And we're going to get there. So let's review really quick our hand signals for American involvement in World War I. Oops, World War II. Number one, first concept, turn your back, shake your hand. Uh-uh, not going to do it. We ain't there for you. This is the neutrality acts on the test. And again, the concept is not involved, don't want to know. And then we take ourselves to the late 30s, the early 40s, 
and we get the next concept, which is the Lend and Lease Act. So this concept is still with our back turned. I'm still shaking my head no, but as I peer over and I look at Europe, what does my face do? <gasps> and now we're not going to get involved, but maybe we're going to do this. And the concept is lend and lease, that I'm trying to supply weapons and armory and aid to my, to my allies, my friends. Look, we have a stake in this, right? England is our ally, and by 1940, it's not looking good. I mean, countries are falling in Europe, you know, boom, 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 one after the other. And we don't want that to happen to, um, to England, because again, self-interest. Then Hitler's looking over the Atlantic Ocean, looking at us. So the Lend and Lease Act is the next step. The only thing you need after that is a 9-11. So, ow. the concept is Pearl Harbor. And Pearl Harbor is the event which gets us involved. So there's your three big vocabulary words for the beginning of the test as I look at that six-minute mark. And again, it's Neutrality Acts, Lend and Lease, Pearl Harbor. So now that we have a crisis, we're going to have a couple concepts to throw at you. One is expanded federal government. And a lot of historians claim it was the New Deal, I'm sorry, it was World War II that got us out of the Great Depression. This is pump spending. The government is enacting price controls. The government is spending money in creating jobs and building things. Therefore, we have almost full employment. And uh, the economy grows rapidly during World War II, at least the um, size of the economy. So, one concept is expanded role of federal government. The other one, we all know during times of crisis, what happens? Yeah. Rights become limited. We saw this with habeas corpus and Lincoln and the border states were uh, Red Scare and Shank, and now we're ready to do it again. Remember, Karamatsu versus United States. This is the court case that outlines the idea that Japanese Americans were legally sent to, I want to say concentration, internment camps in the, in the deserts of the, of the Southwest. Um, Americans with Japanese ancestry. Not Japanese Americans. Americans with Japanese ancestry. I'm looking for the Germans and the German Americans, the Italian Americans, they're not there. This is a nativistic, racist kind of thing. Um, now, maybe there's some justified reasons um, to do this, but it is a clear violation of constitutional law. And the court okays that through Korematsu versus United States. Other concepts, really quick, because we have to get to the end of this, unfortunately, is we have Great Migration 2. Remember, the Great Migration is the movement of African Americans escaping racism and Jim Crow to the north for factory jobs and service-oriented jobs in large cities, creating a great migration um, of human beings, filling our northern cities, and really leading to high poverty. And that's another, another kind of idea, I guess, so we'll kind of put that over there. Roads into the river, uh, Riveter. Women go diesel, hardcore, um, you know, going out to work, independence, m and concept. Um, lots of great domestic ideas. So let's go to the end of the war now, all right? Bang, 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 D-Day, we win. Um, one of the other concepts on the test is why do we drop the bomb? There's another video that you can, you can take a look at on the YouTube page that has Harry Truman's speech rationalizing why we dropped the atomic bomb on um, Nagasaki and first Hiroshima. And estimates are we've killed hundreds of thousands of people in that attack. You need to know the region's answer? I'll give you the region's answer. To save American lives. The beaches of uh, Tokyo do not look like Cape May, New Jersey. So the idea of millions of American soldiers climbing the rocky beaches of Tokyo and being killed by the millions was um, kind of a negative. So we dropped the bomb to save lives. Other reasons are out there, and I don't want to get too much into it, but we got a Cold War on the horizon. We want to show the world what's going on. We spent billions of dollars in the Manhattan Project. Manhattan Project, the secret project about the bomb. You need to know that as well. End of the war. Some really quick vocabulary in about one minute that I have. One is the Geneva Conventions. The idea that the world is going to sign a treaty. No more torture. No more um, POW uh, you know, um, 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 situations where we're killing people and um, humiliating people. That we have rules of war. The Nuremberg Trials. That you can't just blame it on your superior. The Nazi idea. He told me to do it. No, man, it's you. If you torture somebody, yeah, it's that guy's fault for telling you. But you can't absolve yourself from the crime by telling people that you were told to do it, military or no military. But the big concept after World War II, we have baby boom and Social Security is going to you know, be impacted. And there's other ideas about the GI Bill and education. But in the last 10 minutes, the big idea is get ready for the Cold War. At Yalta, FDR, Churchill, and Stalin split the world into two sides. 
basically communism and non-communism. And our new policy, we did it in class, you say it with me, is contain the red, contain the red. More lectures later. Thanks, guys.